and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord jesus came to jericho and intended to pass through the town now a man there named zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and also uh, also a wealthy man was seeking to see who Jesus was but he could not see him because of the crowd for he was short in stature so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus who was about to pass that way when he reached the place Jesus looked up and said to him Zacchaeus come down quickly for today i must stay at your house and he came down quickly and received him with joy when they saw all this they began to grumble saying he has gone to stay at the house of a sinner but zacchaeus stood there and said to the lord behold half of my possessions lord i shall give to the poor and if i have extorted anything from anyone i shall repay it four times over and jesus said to him today Salvation has come to this house because this man too is a descendant of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and to save what was lost The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ praise to God Jesus Christ Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus It is very happy to see all of you in the presence of the Lord Today we are going to reflect about how to make Jesus center of our family And before going to reflect this topic let us reflect about how important is the family in our lives we know the importance of family we all come from family we can't think of ourselves without the family and it is the basic unit in the church as well as in the society it is in the family that we learn to communicate it is in the family that we learned what is good and what is bad it is in the family that we learned how to pray and also how to forgive it is in the family we learned values and morals and the future of the humanity depends on the family because we all come from the families and we all know what is the family we have several types of families in the societies there are small families there are big families there are also joint families and we know very well how the family is being formed but now today our topic is whether jesus is there in our family how to make jesus as the center of our family praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. and if someone asks 
we may say i belong to christian family or i come from christian family the very word itself gives the full meaning christian family means christ centered family christ is already there in our family but by the very word do we live that life if our family is christ centered the all lordship goes to jesus he is the lord of everything he is the lord in all of our lives he is the lord in our private life he is the lord in our work life he is the lord in our civic life and he is the lord in our family life do we give that preference to jesus in our family praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah if jesus is the center of our family he should be the lord and he should control all of us then only we can say ours is a christian family if our family does everything according to the will of the lord then only we are supposed to say that we belong to the christian family and in the second reading we have heard several comp- components how to make our family christ centered family christ centered family requires mainly three components a submissive wife a loving husband and obedient children praise the lord there are only three characters in the family even though we know that in our family grandparents also live and uncles and aunties and also the siblings and many people live but there are only three characters wife husband and children these are the three components a submissive wife a loving husband and obedient children and if we follow these and ours is a godly family praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and we know our family is designed by god that we read here in the gospel of saint matthew chapter 19 words 4 to 6 that the beginning the creator made them male and female and said for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh so they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what god has joined together let no one separate our family is designed by god that is what the scripture tells your partner is a gift from the god and also the children are gift from the lord so entire family is designed by god and he designed for our good and for the good of the church good of the society and good of the nation and my dear brothers and sisters god tells today godly family should grow according to the god's will family should never make any compromises praise the lord hallelujah 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 family should not make compromises with regard to the morals family should not make compromises with regard to the values 
Family should not make compromises with regard to the teachings of Jesus. And family should not make compromises with regard to the lifestyle of Jesus. If we start to make compromises, there will be evils in the society. That is why God tells us today, these are the components we need to follow in our family life. Wife should be submissive. I must be very careful when we speak when I speak about the women nowadays feminism is very powerful so don't be misunderstood when I tell about submissive wife here the word of god tells colossians chapter 3 verse 18 wives submit to your husbands as is fitting in the lord and husbands should not misunderstand. All the Christian married men are called husbands. Submission uh, doesn't mean that your wife is something weaker and she has to follow you, she has to obey you, she has to surrender you. That is not the meaning that is meant here. Submission is a choice that the wife makes for the greater good of the family, not an act of debasement. She is submitting herself to you for the greater good of the family. And also, she gives you the leadership because of the Lord. It is the Lord who said, you must be submissive to your husband. And you are submissive to your husband because of the Lord. And also for the greater good of the family. Not because your wife is weaker than you. God created both equally. Both are equal. Man and women, both are equal. So, he is asking the wife to submit to your husband. It is fitting, he says. It is fitting means it is proper. And when you are submitting yourself to your husband, what all the blessings that you are going to receive? Especially you and also your family that we read here. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. And walk in the wave of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Again we read in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 6. Wives, in the same way submit yourself to your own husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. When you are submitting yourself to your husband, there is a chance for him to convert his life. And also, you bring forth from your life purity and reverence. Again we read here, your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyle and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Your beauty lies in your humility and in your submission, not in the outward appearance. Again he tells, rather it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. Again we read, For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands. Like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord 
you are her daughter if you do what is right and do not give way to fear praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah god is asking all the wives to submit your husband because of him how much of submission he tells just like him jesus humbled himself and he obeyed his father until the death on the cross so therefore he tells all the wives to submit to your husband until your death by submitting yourself you are glorifying the lord and you are working for the greater good of your family therefore god's blessings will flow in your family praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and your submission is only to the lord because it is a commandment it is a commandment don't for, forget that it is a commandment of the lord therefore you are submitting yourself you are submissive to your husband because of the lord you give the ownership to him or the lordship to your husband because as we know when god united both of you he said you are no more two you are only one therefore one body should have only one head the head should be the husband due to this reason he tells you submit yourself to your husband you are humbling yourself by humbling yourself you get you get a lot of blessings it is said when you, when we humble ourselves we don't lose anything nothing will hurt us neither praise nor disgrace we know what we are jesus very often tells one who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is one who humbles himself by humbling ourselves we get many more blessings from the lord due to this reason he tells for the greater good of the family wife must submit herself to her husband praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and with regard to the husband he tells second component in the family character of the husband here we read husband must be loving colossians chapter 3 verse 19 husbands love your wives and do not harsh with them husbands love your wife wives just as christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so husband must love the wives how much just like Christ loved the church how much does the Christ loved the church he loved the church even he gave his life for the church that much husband must love the wife here loving means giving care praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah here loving also means giving care and support he must support the wife he must love the wife just like christ loved the church again we read here ephesians chapter 5 verse 28 so husbands also ought to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his own wife loves himself praise the lord hallelujah he must love his wife just like christ loved the church not only that just like his own body he must love his wife because there are no two, two bodies there god himself said you are no more two you are only one here all husbands must think that when you love your wife you are loving yourself because you are one praise the lord hallelujah 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 again we read here first peter chapter 3 verse 7 you husbands in the same way 
live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered loving alone is not sufficient you must understand you must understand you must support and that should be done until your death praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah here god wishes from the wives to submit he wishes from the husband to love and what are the components of children children obedient children god expects that children must be obedient here we read exodus chapter 20 verse 12 honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land that lord your god is giving you and my dear parents you must always think that you only have the authority over your children government do not have the authority over your children schools do not have the authority over your children or any security do not have the authority over your children parents have the authority over your children and children you should think always that your parents have complete authority over you and again we read one more interesting word of god here genesis chapter 1 words 1 adam adam made love to his wife eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to cain she said with the help of the lord i have brought forth a man always we think that children are our own children but here word of god tells you produced a child with the help of the lord children are not only our children but they are the children of god god's children must be brought up in a godly manner praise the lord hallelujah 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 again and again god repeats in the scripture about the children again we read here psalm 127:3 children are a heritage from the lord offspring a reward from him they are the heritage from the lord and my dear parents how our children are bring, being brought do we give them sufficient care that is what we have just reflected before everything should come from the family family should never compromise with regard to the bringing up of the children if the family makes compromises with regard to the common good with regard to the morals with regard to the values with regard to the teachings of jesus and we are supplying to the world or to the society all the evils nowadays we see in the world so many drug addicts robbers thieves terrorists rapists and prostitutes from where do these people come they all come from the family and those families are not god centered or christ centered they have compromised with regard to one another in their family these components were not found 
submissive wife loving husband obedient children these components were not found they have compromised in these areas so god tells very clearly you produced children because of my help with the help of god we produced children that's why we say children are always gift from the lord and he tells they are the inheritance from the lord heritage from the lord and this inheritance we have to pass to the future then generations in the same way filling them with the faith filling them with values and morals filling them with the teachings of jesus so he tells children should be obedient and you are the on this earth you are having the authority over your children no one else you are the stewards for your children and we are bringing or we are growing the god's children on this earth how much we must be godly how much we must take care of them are we putting daily in them god's values let us in a with a deep faith think praise the lord hallelujah 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 otherwise god tells if these components are not found in our family he tells everything is meaningless ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2 he tells meaningless meaningless says the teacher utterly meaningless and in the proverbs we read a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children here we speak about the spiritual inheritance and we are christians because of our ancestors the same we carry the values of christ we keep up the morals the same thing should be passed on to our children and let us not forget that our family is built up by the lord psalms 127:1 unless the lord builds the house the builders labor in vain unless the lord watches over the city the guards stand watch in vain so we must build our family keeping god as the center of it and if we wanted to keep god as the center why must have the submissive character husband must have the loving character children must have the obedient character everyone in the family one should cooperate with the other that is what god expects from each one of us and again here we read psalm 91:1 whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty and if we possess these characters in the family always we are under the protection of the lord so therefore let us examine ourselves and see in our family all of us carry these characters which god is expecting from each one of us and we know there are many godly families how much blessings they have received from the lord bible again and again tells to each one of us family family is the backbone of the society if you undermine the family you undermine the society if you weaken the family then we you weaken the society if you disintegrate the family then you disintegrate the society if you destroy the family we are destroying the society 
on the other way if we make jesus as the center of our family or if we make god as the center of our family the blessings will flow in our family god grows our family god blesses our family god guides our family and god protects our family if we make jesus as the center of our family and we have several examples in the bible itself if we take example of the family of abraham we know how god protected blessed and has given a growth in his family god once told him you will have the children just like the stars of heaven now we ourselves will call we are the children of abraham that many children he has possessed again we know the family of job how god blessed his family he himself said it is a righteous family and sometimes he had some disputes in the family because there was a debate between god and satan and job was taken as an example but after that again god blessed him with all that he had lost because that was a godly family we know the family of noah when all people sinned god wanted to punish all of them but he wanted to save only noah and his family because that was a god fearing family and we know the family of jesus mary and joseph how god protected them how god took care of them when herod wanted to kill jesus how god protected them and if our family is christ centered all his guidance all his protection all his help every time we experience in our families praise the lord hallelujah 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 and what we need to do in order to make jesus as the center of our family in the hebrews we read for every house is built by someone but god is the builder of everything we must always remember the builder we know that when our house is constructed we consulted the builder and his plan and we took his suggestions and we expressed our own uh, wish and will and accordingly everything went on well thus we had a beautiful house but here god tells he is the builder of everything our family is built by god and that is quite sure our partner is a gift our children are gift from the lord and everything our family is not built by us but it is built by god so we must always remember the builder and always we should think family should not in any way divide there shall not be any quarrels any misunderstanding etc if you wanted to avoid those things and we must always keep christ as the center of our family that is what we read here mark 3:25 if a house is divided against itself that house cannot stand and for that we need family prayer to be united and we have to ask god's wisdom to protect us god's wisdom to know what is good and what is bad for our family good to promote bad to eradicate and constantly we need god's protection then only we can be unified in the family and always we should think about good of the others in the family think about our wife think about our husband think about our children and the total good of the family members 
praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah and we know what are the blessings that we get if jesus is the center of our family that is what we read in today's gospel sakayus heard about jesus he doesn't know anything about jesus but he came to know that jesus does miracles he does healings and many people are getting many benefits he wanted to see jesus one day he had a great desire but when jesus was passing on that way he looked at sakayus and said sakayus please come down today i wanted to stay at your house praise the lord hallelujah 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 and we know what had happened and what will happen when jesus stays at home again jesus tells after reaching his house jesus told to that family today salvation has come to this house praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah jesus said today salvation has come to this house why salvation has come because jesus is there when we make jesus as the center of our family already on this earth itself we experience the salvation that we are going to attain sometimes after and my dear friends we need to check whether jesus is there in our family or not is our family is christ centered you know joseph and mary could not even think of a moment when they lost jesus once they came to know that jesus is missing in their life immediately they left to home and the scripture tells they did not even take a glass of water until they found jesus and god tells very clearly if you seek you will find me let us think about our family do we experience real peace joy happiness unity in our families if those things are not there and jesus is not there in our family we just bear the name like a christian only name is christian but the christ is not living in our family and in our lives just like mary and joseph mother mary and joseph if jesus is missing in our life let us like those people try to find him bring him to our home he likes to stay with us he always wanted to protect us guide us strengthen us and guide our families let us pray for that gift during this mass let us close all our eyes and pray let us once again think about the family that god has given to each one of us the partner husband wife children all are gift from the lord and it is the god who designed our family and he has given us so many good values to live like a godly life and he blessed all oh, every family be fruitful and be happy whether that happiness do we experience in our day to day life and today he promises to each one of us he stays he wanted to stay with us he wanted to stay in our families when jesus stays in our family he grows our family in a godly manner he protects our family from all dangers and difficulties and all the sickness 
he guides our family each and every moment not to fall in the sin and his blessings will be always in our families if he is with us just like sakayus accept him into our family let us ask our lord lord stay with me always walk with me guide and protect me and my family let no evil overpower me you are alone sufficient for me let us make a promise to the lord i surrender myself completely to you i submit not only me but my family into your protective care lord bless each and every one of us like the family of elizabeth and sakaria like the family of joachim and anna lord make my family once again bringing our family members on this altar asking god's blessings for all of them let us with a deep faith pray during this mass we make this prayer through christ our lord 